feel like you need this word this morning. So let's ask God to open our hearts. Father, I thank you for your grace and your goodness. I ask you, God, that your love will just pour out upon us. God, you see everything, everything that we need clear in our lives. And I ask you, God, that you will help us to become what you want us to be. Father, there are people here who you brought to change their lives today, today. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, it's good to see you in God's house. See several friends this morning. We have some family with us this morning. I also see Randy Stokes, a former staff member of our church here this morning. Let him, let him know how glad you are to see him. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to bring you a message entitled Applause this morning. Whose applause are you running forward for? Romans chapter 8, verse number 10. I'm going to read it to you quickly. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. Listen to that again. And Christ lives within you. So even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit, come on now, who? The Spirit gives you life because you have been made right with God. How many of you understand the principle that what happens on the inside of you affects what happens around you? It's a biblical principle. It's a life principle. This morning, I, I, I ran into a guy, and, and I actually, Christine and I had seen he and his wife on New Year's Eve. They, they served faithfully down at the station, and she came in, and I said, hey, how you doing? And she goes, I don't know, Father, I don't feel real good. Just just stuffed up, just, just sounded off, and I was like, well, God bless you, sister. Amen. This morning, I ran into him. I said, hey, brother, how you doing? He said, well, I don't feel so good. He said, I couldn't stay away from my wife. I had to give her a kiss. Come on now, amen. Why? What was inside of her has affected him, or infected in that particular case, him. Amen. See, there's an atmosphere that is created. Have you ever been around somebody that comes into the room with the wrong atmosphere around their lives? You're having a great day, and you're like, why did you even come? You came in here and oozed your attitude all over me. I just want to wash it off. You see, what's, what's happening on the inside of you affects what happens on the outside of you. And I want you to get this today. Well, 50 years ago, they did a, a test with three men. They took three men, and I don't know how they chose these three particular men, but they, they gave them each a pressure gauge. And when those men were given the pressure gauge, they were told to squeeze that pressure gauge, and they squeezed the pressure gauge, and on average, they were able to squeeze 110 pounds of pressure. 110 pounds of pressure, and, and they, just, they were just barreling down on it. They took those same men who on average had already proven that they could average out 110 pounds of pressure each, and they started putting them through a series of tests. And as they started putting them through these series of tests that began to, to be negative on their life and began to make them tired and vulnerable, and as they began to, to tear down their, their defense system and get them in a mindset that was different and weak and, and, and weary, when they got them in the wrong mindset, now remember what happens inside of you affects what happens outside of you. And when they put them in the wrong mindset, what began to happen was they began to tell them, you are weak, you have no strength, you can't do this, you're, you're not as strong as you used to be, you're, you're, you're going to fail at this. And, and they gave the same men who just days before had, had squeezed 110 pounds of pressure, they gave them the same uh, device, told them to squeeze with all that's in them, and on average, after they were weary, beaten down, and deprived in their minds, they were only able to squeeze 29 pounds of pressure. They took them from 110 to 29 because the environment on the outside of them was coming and they were beginning to believe it on the inside of them. I'm, I'm, you see where I'm going with this. They were beginning to believe it on the inside and what they believed on the inside affected where they were able to go on the outside. Now look, I, I don't mean to jump ahead, but I'm looking for somebody this year who says I'm tired of believing the lies of the devil and I'm tired of letting him dictate to me what happens around me and I'm ready to start believing the promises of God so that the atmosphere around me will be that of blessings and strength and health and favor of God. Amen. God's looking for somebody who will believe God's promises. 
So they took these same men and they began to build their strength. They began to encourage them. They began to tell them that they were champions, that they were stronger than they, they really were. They began to tell them, you can do better than you've ever done. We believe you can do something great. And those same men who weeks before had squeezed 110 and then at the lowest point could only squeeze 29 pounds of pressure, those same men squeezed 145 pounds of pressure because they began to believe on the inside what was said to them on the outside. Now, that may not make a lot of sense to, uh, uh, to you at this point because when I first heard the study, I was like, well, you know, that's kind of interesting. But then I began to realize too many of us are bound by the lies of the devil. I like what Henry Ford said about this. Henry Ford said, if you think you can or if you think you can't, you're right think about that for a moment if you think you can or if you think you can you're right you see the mind doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is imagined that's why you think something's going to scare you to death sometimes you know fear fear can can have an effect upon your life because your mind cannot it doesn't have the sensory abilities to determine the difference between what is real and what is imagined these men lost their strength or gained their strength based upon what they believed and I began to realize that if we would admit it, we would also have to say that what's happened in our life up to this point is greatly affected by, by what we have seen that has made us vulnerable or what we have seen that has made us feel strong. It is time for us to begin to move forward. But the problem is we begin to lose ground, we begin to back up, and we don't even feel like we're where we were some years ago. These losses are not the result of our inability, but they are rather the result of our losing our confidence. I don't know where this just came from, but, but I'll never forget one day. I was out in this gym, and, and Pastor David had secured a wrestling mat out in our gym, and, and I was walking along, and all these big old juniors and seniors in our school were wrestling each other, and, and they were catcalling me. Come on, Pastor Don. Come on, come on, come on. I said, uh, What? They said, wrestle with us. Show us, uh, show us what you got. And I said, I looked at them, and some of them are sitting in here now. They can testify to it. The big old boys, big old boys. I said, I'll wrestle you as long as it's one at a time. They said, all right, Pastor Don, one at a time. There's four or five of them, big old boys. And they, one at a time, I pinned them all, one at a time. I mean, it, it, was, it got harder and harder as it went, but I pinned them one at a time. When I got up, they were all like, wow, Pastor Don, wow. I was walking away doing this. I told, him, I told him, I said, don't forget the principle. When you're older, you're wiser, and you know how to fight better. Come on now, amen, amen. You see, instead of advancing because of our maturity and advancing because of the scars that we have, we begin to believe the lie that somehow my scar disqualifies me from his favor, that somehow my yesterday keeps my tomorrow from coming something better. But I've come to tell you today, what you believe on the inside will affect what happens on the outside of you. And it's time for you, Pastor Don, that's just positive thinking. That's just positive thinking. No, the word Word of God says, if Christ is in you, the same spirit that works in you will begin to bring life to your, to your being. Amen. Christ is in you. What's in you? Do you have, whew, do you have the devil telling you lies? You feeling your, your life full of junk, full, and, full of garbage? You're watching stuff you shouldn't be watching? You're listening to the lies of the devil telling you you're really this way when you know that's not how God created you to be? It's time for us to shake ourselves and say, I'm tired of putting up a funnel called media. I'm tired of putting up a funnel called junk and letting it determine who I am. I am ready for the promises of God to be planted in me and to be birthed out of me and to affect what happens around me. Can I get an amen here this morning? Amen. I feel what I've come to preach to you today. See, Romans 8 and 10 says, but if Christ is in you. And that's the question today. Is Christ in you? Is he down inside of you? We've been trying to do this religious thing ourselves. We're like a, a bunch of, what did Jesus call them, whitewashed walls. We've been trying to paint ourselves up and look right and get the right stuff on the outside. But I didn't come to preach that kind of gospel to you today. I came to preach the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ, that if this same spirit is in you, he will work in you, amen. Listen to what the, uh, uh, the message translation says. It says, verse 11 of Romans 8, it says, st it stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. Listen to this. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from the dead life. How many are thankful for deliverance this morning? Amen. With his spirit living in your body, you will be as alive as Christ. So don't you see, watch this now, 
You don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent. Come on. Some of you are paying on yesterday's problems. You're paying on yesterday's struggles. You're pay- Am I making sense to anybody this morning? You're paying on all of the faults, failures, and burdens that you've been carrying long enough. But don't you understand that when Jesus Christ went to a cross and he died for your sins, he paid your debt in full. And it is time for you to accept that and stop living in yesterday and say, God, I will live in your promises for me now and today. Amen. Verse 14 says, because God's Spirit beckons you, and there are places to go and things to do. And we must begin to believe that God is for us. And since Christ is in us, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Here's the question. Who are you going to believe? I mean, that's a simple question. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe the devil and his lies? Or are you going to begin to believe your king? Your king says you're more than a conqueror. But the problem is we feel more like a failure. We feel more like, like, like we're losing. Now look, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. As a pastor, I, I, I can struggle right along with you. I left my house this morning. Before I left the house, three times I had to stop and say, you can do this in Jesus' name. You can go forward in Jesus' name. I had to begin to confess the word of God over my life. Because as a pastor, I'm tempted just like you're tempted. As a father, I feel like I fail more than I win. And as a husband, I feel more like a chump than a shining knight. Come on now. Amen. I know what you go through. But just like you, I have to make a decision. Am I going to believe God or the lie? Am I going to believe my faults and my failures this scream, or am I going to believe my destiny that calls me forward to become something greater for God? Look, my time is short. If you get a little bit happier with me, we might get done this morning. Come on. I'm determined to begin to believe what God says. Our whole faith is built on what you believe. You must believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you must believe that the power of Christ was uh, the power of, the, of God raised Christ from the dead. And if He's not alive, then what are we doing here? We have to walk in faith. You have to become a person who allows what you believe to determine what happens around you. And instead of believing the lies of the devil, you've got to replace them with the promises of God. You must believe when you're in trouble, John 16, 33. Listen to what Jesus said. Jesus said, here on earth you're going to have trials. You're going to have sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. The one who told you you can make it because I've made it walks with you and he's inside of you. When you're lonely, it's time for you to remember Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, For he hath said, I will never leave thee, and I will never forsake thee. When the devil starts showing up telling you nobody cares, nobody's here, nobody, everybody's forgotten you, nobody, nobody wants to know what you think, nobody even cares what you think, you need to begin to say something back to the enemy. Enemy, you don't understand. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And he will never leave me. He will never forsake me. And what's in you begins to change the atmosphere around you. You see, I came in here this morning. We've had, a, we've had an atmosphere. And I want what's happening here to begin to affect what's happening here. I, that's why I'm so passionate today. I believe what God's saying to us. You know, when you feel like you've lost your way, it's time for you to begin to claim Proverbs 16 and 9, but the Lord determines our steps. I left here the other day, and I, I, I just felt to go a different direction. And, and I don't know why I felt to go that direction. God didn't speak to me. I, 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 I was following my gut. I was looking for lunch. Sometimes God can use your gut. Can I get an amen for that? I was looking for lunch, uh, and, I, and I drove past all the places I thought I was going, and people were like, where are you going? I said, I don't even know where I'm going. And I just kept driving, and I kept driving. Ended up in Gainesville. Ended up at a little restaurant I'd never been to before. They said they had the best chicken salad in the world. They lied, but let's go on. Amen. And I, I had lunch, and my phone went off. And I was needed at the hospital then. And I was two roads over from the Gainesville Hospital. 
I said, Proverbs 16 and 9, the Lord orders the footsteps of the righteous. See, some of you feel like you're walking. My goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit when I've come to tell you. You feel like you're walking around wondering where you're going. What you need to start claiming is this promise. God, I am yours, and what's happening in me, make me righteous because I want you to determine where I'm going on the outside. I want you to do something in me, God. God, I don't know where. I don't know what my next step is, but I know what your word says. Your word says if I live right, you're going to help that step to be right. Amen. problem is we need to learn a truth that even Hollywood knows and sports arenas know there's a lot of movies that have been won- made about this very truth and triumphs that have have been won on ball, ball fields because of this truth see it, I don't know if you noticed anybody yesterday on one of your favorite teams that were playing but a lot of the guys they'll have somebody else's number on their helmet they'll have somebody else's initials on their shirt they'll 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 be playing with somebody else's number somewhere on their uniform now, to us, that's a sign of respect. To us, that's a way to say, hey, you know, this is, uh, this is good. And, and, and they just, they're showing how much they love them, but not to the player. The player says, I wear their number because today I don't play for myself. I play for somebody else. And what we have forgotten is we're just trying to to inch along. My goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost in what I'm about to do. We're just trying to inch along. We're just trying to maybe not fail. We're trying not to look so bad. We want want to feel better during church so we can lift our hands. But that's not what the Spirit of God has called us to do. We have not been called to play for ourselves. But if Christ is in you, you have been called to win because there's a conqueror down inside of you. There's a lion of the tribe of Judah inside of you. And you need to do better to the glory of God. Amen. Pastor Don, I I don't know where you get this. I get it out of Galatians 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Amen. When we live with Christ in us, we no longer strive to please people, but we give our best to please God. What does Psalms 119.6 say? It it, it says uh, that uh, in the Latin Vulgate, it actually says, I shall please the Lord in the land of the living. You know, I like, I'm a, I like to please, you know. I'm a, when my wife came home the other day, I had put up all the Christmas decorations, just put them away. Just cleaned the whole house. And all I wanted to see, all I needed to see was a pleased look on her face. So I cleaned, I went up and down the stairs, I swept, I boxed. It's probably all in the wrong boxes, baby, I'm telling you. But all I was waiting for, my goodness, I feel the Holy Ghost in what I'm telling you. All I was waiting for was her to come home exhausted from work and to come in. I just wanted to see the look on her face when she went, hallelujah. Why? Because I wanted to please her. I wanted her to know that I value her. What would happen to us this year if we stopped worrying about what our neighbors thought? We stopped worrying about what the people down uh, down at our jobs thought. What would happen if we stopped worrying about what this person thinks about how we worship and we start getting the junk, put it away, get rid of it, clean it all up so that when the father comes in the house, we see a look upon his face that he says, that's my child, that's the one in whom I love. Amen. Pastor Don, I can't see him, but boy, you can feel him. Am I making sense to anybody? Somebody play something or I'll preach all day. You see, guys, we stand at the beginning of a new year. We stand at the beginning of a new year, and we have a year full of potential. Who are you playing for? Who are you trying to please? Who are you trying to walk for? If you're trying to please man, there's a problem. I think it's time for us to not worry about whether or not the crowds are going to cheer our name. It's time for us to stop trying to please the people who pat us on the back. Boy, when this was dropped into my heart, it just, it just affected me. It's time for us to start seeking for the applause of two nail-scarred hands. You can do it. Well done, my child. Well done. That down inside of you, you're not looking around going, did they see me? Did they see me? No, 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 it's, How could I ever repay what you've done in me? Do you feel what I feel right now? How could I ever repay what you've done inside of me?
When you feel vulnerable, push back the lies and ask yourself, what could I need to do right here to please my Savior? What do I need to do to bring Him glory? Stand with me, please, today. We all need somebody to believe in us. I mean, we, we all need somebody who believes in us more than we believe in ourselves. That's who Jesus is. That's what he does. Jesus believes in you. Jesus loves you. I don't care who told you you were going to be a failure. Jesus said you're a conqueror. I don't mean to go back here again, but this just dropped in my spirit earlier today. You know, your stepdaddy might have been jealous over how much your relationship was with your mama, so he told you you were a problem and you were in the way, and you've been listening to that garbage your whole life. It's time for you to start hearing the promise of a father who said, I made you special the way you are. Some of you, all you can hear is that person that walked out on you telling you you weren't worth it, but it's time for you to begin to hear God who said, I will never leave you. You're worth it all. I used to hear people say that God would bankrupt heaven for us. I thought, how would God bankrupt heaven? God pays everything. But God would take the greatest treasure, his own son, and say, I believe in you enough. Do you understand that? I believe in you enough. And if you will believe my promises, not only will I work inside of you, but I will affect everything around you. My God will set you free this year from things that have bound you. And you do not, if you go on your own, you will repeat 2015's mistakes. But he that is in you, are you hearing what I'm saying? He that is in you can make 2016 better than 2015. Because you begin to allow him to work for you and through you and in you. Bow your heads. Can you hear it? Can you hear him down inside of you? I can, it's like you can begin to hear him. You can do it. Your own private cheering section. You can do it. You can do it. I, I don't know why, but I keep keeping this image of that guy from Facing the Giants where he's in the wheelchair and he's, he's trying to root on the young kicker and he helps himself out, out of the wheelchair and he puts his arms and he starts just, just wailing with his hands, applauding. He starts cheering him on. You can do it. You can do it. I can almost see those two nail-scarred hands going, you can make it. You can make it. You can do this. I believe in you. I died for you to equip you. My spirit will help you. What you believe on the inside is going to change what happens on the outside. Christ is in you, and you have everything you need. With every head bowed and every eye closed, God's speaking to somebody today. We have fought up a mountain all morning, but I'm telling you, we're crossing over right now. God's here for somebody. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your opportunity. What's happening in you is going to affect what's happening around you. If you're here this morning and you say, Pastor, God, Pastor Don, I need God to do something in my life. I need something to change in me so that instead of focusing on trying to fix what's around you, you want God to change what's in you. Would you join me here in the front? Ask God change your life. These altars are open. Would you join me here in the front and ask God to change your life? As soon as these get here, let, let people of faith to get right behind them and lay their hands on them just gently upon them. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. God, do something in me that changes what's happening around me. There are homes that God's going to change you and your home is going to become more stable. My goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit of God. The devil thought he had your mind, but God's going to make a change in you that's going to give you a stable mind and strength. Come on, quickly, quickly, help me pray. I need some men and women of God help me pray for these. Over here on my left side, quickly, 
quickly, quickly. I feel the power of Jesus. I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. Oh, hallelujah. Upon that cross, and I'll never know how much he cost to see my sin. work inside of you. How much it goes to see my sin. Strongholds are breaking by the power of Jesus. church. Here I am Worship God while these are sinking into this altar. Holy Spirit of the living God. I am to say that God making a change. God making a change. God making a change. God making a change. just with your heads bowed for just a moment. I know there are people in this altar. God's touching lives. Things are breaking. Things are happening right here. And God didn't bring you to this house by accident today. Quickly, I want you to listen to me with everybody praying. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Don, I want to start this year off by inviting God into my life. I want to make Jesus Christ my Savior, just like those in the last service did, saying today, I, I, I want God in me. I want Him to change who I am. I want Him to change my life. Now, look, you, this may be the very first time you prayed this prayer, or it may be that you, you prayed it when you were young, but you know that Jesus has not been in control in your life, and you want to make Him your Savior completely, completely, with nobody looking around and everybody praying. I, I don't need your help, nor does the Holy Ghost. I need you praying right now. If that's you, I want you to stick your hands straight up in the air as high as you can. Join these that already have their hands up in the air. Quickly, quickly, thank you, thank you, thank you. Quickly, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are there others? I feel the Holy Ghost of God. Lives are being changed for all eternity right now. Thank you. Are there others? God's saving your soul right now. Thank you, thank you. God's changing lives right now. God's changing lives. By the, my goodness, I feel the Holy Spirit of the living God. I feel you, Jesus. Some of you, he's been waiting for you so long, but you're coming home today. You're coming home. All right, I want you to grab hands with somebody near you. Grab hands with somebody near you. You're already grabbed hands. You know we're moving forward. You know what we're about to do. We're about to pray a prayer of faith. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead, you would be born again. But right now, I just feel God. He, there's, he, I just felt a, just, just, a, just a check. Is there somebody that you knew was your moment to respond? You, you knew God was calling you. Look, look, you say, Pastor Don, I know that he's my Savior, but I, I've got to grow. I've got to grow. I, I'm tired of being cold. Can I see your hand if that's you? You're ready for God to do something in your life. Come on. 
Hands going up all over this place. Hands going up all over this place. This is your moment. This is your time. This is your hour. Holy Ghost of the living God, I feel your presence. I worship you. I magnify you for what you're doing. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let's pray this prayer of confession. The Bible says we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Everybody pray with me. Pray with me together. Jesus, come on, let's all pray it. Jesus, by faith, I believe your promises. I will not believe the lies of the devil. I accept the grace of God. I am a sinner in need of a Savior. And today, I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me, to save me. By faith, this moment, I believe I am forgiven. By faith, I declare God is my Father. Heaven is my home. I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, come on, rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. Hallelujah.